Hello everyone, Solomon here, and it's this is fine. April 8th, Monday, 2026. I've just came back from working 16 hours each. So we worked Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for 16 hours each. And it was very intensive. Uh, okay, the environment, general environment was working at the hospital, which is where you can do overtime because they're always low staffed. And there is an infinite number of people going in and out of healthcare facilities all the time because people don't know how to take care of themselves. And if they did know, they don't do it because age is a problem they get people get old and they don't give a fuck anymore um or they just never gave a fuck in general and they don't care and two it they just live vicariously through their kids and then they themselves don't give a fuck about themselves and this happens with mothers uh they care about everyone else on a super annoying level to the point that they actually injure themselves not physically but they don't take care of themselves and it's weird uh, how are you supposed to take care of other people if you don't even take care of yourself this is a very common theme but once you have kids it changes your hormones and you know it changes your personality and you're always worrying and having anxiety that's just I've seen a lot of beings like this and it's absolute shit and it's, it's, it's a very shit model it's a very shit personality um, to be like that and that's called mother mode um, you may appreciate your mother but is she healthy does she take care of herself I mean if she's taking care of you and you're appreciative of her you know it's like a one-sided street she's not taking her she's not taking care of herself Everyone always tells me, you know, their mother, their mother-in-law, or whatever the fuck, you know, keeps worrying and freaking out and doing all these stupid, crazy dementia, Alzheimer's things, and they're worried about her. And you know what? That just comes with the territory of being a mother. It's just unexplainable crazy shit. Um, speaking of which, I worked the 16 hours for three days just to sample I I just got got the opportunity at the hospital to, to be doing so normally I only work eight hours because that's what is expected and what is normal uh, five uh, days a week 40 hours each um, to complete 40 hours minimum now that, that I've done I've hit 95 hours um, you know it goes to outlier territory. Elon Musk has a 100 hour work week. Although it's probably more like 95. Anyways, that translates to working six days, 16 hours each day. So you have less than eight hours of doing anything right after work, including driving yourself home, including sleeping, including eating, and just, just being able to sustain yourself uh, without collapsing or doing anything for entertainment. So what kind of life is this? Um, you know, how did I feel? <clears throat> it's something to be experienced. No one can really explain it to you, except unless you did it. Uh, that's the thing about life. You experience things. You experience things, and you experience things. And, um, you know, you don't take those experiences for granted. In my case, you go out there and do the hard things. People don't go out there and do the hard things anymore. They just resort to their default. And that may be play video games. 
you know, log into Cornhub, you know, all the instant gratification things. What about delayed gratification? That's not taught in schools, and you won't learn it unless it's forced upon you because life is, you know, shit hits the ceiling fan one day. Your parents or whoever dies in your family, and you just end up a homeless, and you just have to fend for yourself. The things that they want, that you took granted for, are now gone. Free housing that they paid for, and you're just mooching. You know, the fact that they paid the bills all this time food shelter water and clothing and you know other stupid stuff you know it's now solely your responsibility I mean it could be a positive it could be a negative for you it could be a mean freedom it, it depends on the person but I would think it would just generally make your life harder because unless you're a lawyer or a doctor you know or making money like auto, auto magically on auto on autopilot doing an OnlyFans or something. Life is gonna be tough, especially if you're a guy. So I'm gonna insert guy into the story storyline on this earth. Um, I don't expect most people to be beautiful women. Uh, that's like get a jail card. That's like you know winning the genetic lottery in terms of financial. Uh, economic success although some people who are actually or have been sex trafficked would say otherwise I guess this is a male's perspective on being a girl that you could literally just have sex with anyone within you know within the vicinity and most women would argue that that's a terrible perk that's a better or that's a terrible you know that's not a lottery ticket, that's more like a death sentence, you know. It's more about a matter of perspective, I mean. In any event, in my own experiences, I work 16 hours Friday, 16 hours Saturday, and 16 hours Sunday. In a hospital setting. So there were six people, there was fat people, there was mean people. You know. Some fat old lady is always at at the hospital or some health clinic I mean I'm ageist I'm, I'm very biased and, and you know towards fat old people it's just like you get older and you get fatter I mean I mean it's, it's, it's not a pretty story no compassion you know I expect everyone to be young and healthy and that's just not life most people are just fugly they shop at Walmart and they eat at McDonald's and it's just like that's just the thing to be doing um that's New Jersey okay New Jersey is a super ultra expensive state which I'm told again you you have a demographics there's a lot of old people you know and it's just like when you get here, you know, you think it's going to be like Hollywood or something. No, it's the same. It's plagued by every uh, very similar things uh, than than what you know everyone else is experiencing. Obesity, you know, people who look like Wal uh, they they shop at or work at Walmart. You know, just people getting on and off the bus of New Jersey Transit. Sometimes it's really mother effing ghetto. Sometimes it's really mother effing hood, especially you know New York City, and the populations and demographics you be, you'll be dealing with. That's it, you know. Most people are poor. Most people are broke. Most people don't have anything to lose, you know. But that's everywhere, uh, you know. Expect that, you know. There's not gonna be a beautiful woman. There's not gonna be. You know, some kind of Anne Hathaway waiting for you, or, or Taylor Swift, you know, looking kind of girl. And if there was, she would be in some kind of profession. Some, you know, if if anything, she would just be a dedicated OnlyFans, you know, streamer or something. It's just like this girl is going to take advantage of her, what she has going for her, makeup and all this stuff, and and whore herself out for money because you know an apartment here is. 
at a minimum price of two thousand dollars I just looked at the new luxury apartments in West Orange where I grew up and that was two thousand six hundred dollars for one bedroom one bedroom because it connects to New York City the demographic location the geopolitical geographic geopolitical geographic location two thousand six hundred you know they're trying to make New Jersey look like it's Brooklyn or Queens or something or even the Bronx or Harlem so that they can charge people New York City prices which is absolutely fucking stupid um you can drive you can get to New York City you know in 30 minutes from that point take the Garden State Parkway and reach the Holland Tunnel and then pay $30 for toll so you could say tell everyone oh I work in the city I work in New York you know and for what you know the glamour everyone's being tricked by the glamour in New York City it's not that great there's a very high very high very high crime rate okay there is a lot of crime there right now there's a lot of my oh yeah come see the migrant crisis again people are vast majority of people you meet on the street are poor you know everyone's falling for the glamour you know everyone's falling for the glamour unless you work there unless you make money in New York City why the would you be going there you know I know that Google has established a place there you know they have the Wolf of Wall Street jobs and stuff the financial district if you're not you know in it for work why you can go there you know who has this kind of money so if you pay two thousand six hundred dollars a month for rent it's and you had a spending limit of an overall budget of one hundred thousand dollars that would only last you three years of rent pay three years of rent pay you could have saved that money up and did whatever but twenty six hundred dollars an hour uh, a month is, is ridiculously high you could otherwise I've bought a house and paid a mortgage or at least a one bedroom condo or two bedroom condo but instead you're just renting and at the end of your lease what do you have to take home nothing absolutely nothing and what is in West Orange you know I went to West Orange High School at the time I had to go to high school so there was something for me to do some sense of urgency as an adult living in West Orange, what is there? Tell me what is there? there's a shop right next door. I don't know. I don't, there's there's no real you know there's a Thomas Edison, you know, factory downstairs. I mean there's there's no modern like work place you can work there. You know, unless you were the owner of like the wine shop next door or or something or you know one of these like smaller businesses you don't have to care um, there's no reason to be living in West Orange uh, unless you're a business owner or something um, there is Kessler Institute you could be a, a doctor there are a lot of Jewish lawyers around in that area um, you could be a lawyer other than that I, I don't What's the point? Uh, there's just a shop right there. There's a buffet in in the you know mall in the mini malls mall there. There's nothing. There's no nightclubs. There's no anything cool. I mean, you get to be a parent. But this is the suburbs, okay? You can have a house with a lawn on it. Um, who the hell wants to live in an apartment? In the suburbs, that's kind of like a Finland thing, you know, like this metropolitan area in the nature and suburban area. But anyway, anyways, most people have a home in the suburbs, 
where they just live out their adult life having kids that's what you know 99% of the population do until the kids grow up and do their own thing you know why would you need this bachelor looking pad of an apartment I don't know I see the place looking hood real quick um, you know, unless all the doctors and the lawyers, you know, combine forces and live there for whatever reason. Still, I don't know. I don't know why they would. They were already, they would already have been established and have a home and stuff. And they don't really need to be living there to begin with because they already have establishments and in, in their circles and stuff, you know, to just move in there and spend more money that they don't have to is kind of crazy and what is in it for them is to establish a network of people living in the same apartment which they probably would not because they would have doctors and lawyers have kids right you know they would not live in an apartment they would have their own home because they have that much motherfucking money uh, you're talking about Jews you're talking about Indian you're talking about Chinese you know lawyers and doctors it's like it doesn't make any sense. Again, with the glamour, chasing, chasing social status down. Then they're going to realize, where's my lawn? I have children, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Maybe this is more for the younger generation. Maybe they'll only live in the apartment for one or two years, and then they have a kid. And then they realize, you know, the woman is being a Karen, and that she wants a house and a lawn and, you know, to two-door garage because she's so materialistic and shit and young Chad is like I have to spend how much on this shit to please this like demonic woman who can't stop buying stuff yep that's exactly what you do I want a house I want a house she finally gets the house and she complains about you know I, I have to call Home Depot and get my tiles changed and and my doors should be painted because there's a chip on the paint and then I have to do my nails and my hair and, and then I have to repaint the room for another several time because I because I think I'm Barbie I'm a Barbie architect I need several different shades of pink because I can't stop myself and that's how it be if you want to marry that and have kids with that go ahead go ahead Chad that's what you've been doing since forever you know then you get divorced and, you know, you just have another family of, you know, with another different woman who's younger. And, but that's what Chad does. I, I don't know how he manages, but, you know, that's that's Chad. I'm not, I'm not Chad. I mean, I, someone like Eli Manning can definitely afford, you know, whatever the hell. And usually, usually that's what he does. If he can aff if Elon Musk can afford several different divorces with and establish, you know, several different baby mamas with all these 11 different kids from different baby mamas and... You know, then, then so be it. I, I don't know. I'm not at that level. I don't want to be at that level. You know, I don't want to take the steps to be going through that. And it's just like too crazy. I can't handle it emotionally. And it's just... That is the guy thing to do. Just have, you know, a bunch of random women with a, and a bunch of kids. And pay a bunch of child support. And have your paycheck garnished. And have all these divorce lawyers and stuff that seems to be the thing to be doing these days that's just not my thing to do and it would utterly, utterly just stress me out and kill me uh, so, you know with a slow painful death uh, or maybe you are Chad I don't expect most people to be Chad I mean it's 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 crazy not only do, uh, do you have, are you supposed to be a five-star general and a you, you know NFL quarterback on top of you know having several different you know lawyer and doctor and stem degrees uh you also ha have to accompany that with a woman several different women with you know several different baby mamas with you know five plus kids if you can pull that off great i don't think most people can even come close or they would be lucky just to have one thing that chad has Either the money, the house, or the kids, or whatever he values, like a car, like a fancy sports car. So in reality, um, you know, did I enjoy doing 16 hours a day for three days? 
No, I didn't. Uh, did I enjoy the, making the money? No, I did not. It's not like I haven't had money before. Um, you know, what can I do with it? Again, I just played out the scenarios of a young male's life. Just knocking up women and having kids. And that's what Chad does. Chase the ground girls. Um, that's like one of the top priorities he has or things he's interested in knocking up girls and getting them pregnant um you know that's what Bill Cosby was into Je Jeffrey Epstein the island you know just chasing around girls that's all what we all very well know money and girls money and girls uh, there's also an ancient philosophy that teaches us that, you know, all of man's problems come because he can't sit still in a room for 30 minutes. At least 30 minutes. So you're doing all these crazy things for instant gratification. You know, you're spreading your seed and nutting all over the place. And... You know, what philosophy tries to instill on people or teach to better people in a better, better practical way is to practice discipline, meditation, self-reflection, and, um, ooh, grit. Well, grit follows with working long hours and just being able to pay your mortgage. Resiliency. Practice resiliency, that's what it is. Hardship, ad, trial, ad, adversary, adversity, trial over adversity, things like that. And that's a repeating pattern of life. Once you get over the hurdles each step of the way, you become a stronger, more resilient person. And that you don't have to do all these crazy things like chase girls around obsessed about corn hub and video games that you could just be be happy not having to buy all these crazy things not having to run around and make money and chase shiny objects you can just be chilling in your room and having a good time because you've conquered your inner demons you don't need all that sh those vices anymore you know it's like a pacifier some people understand some people don't um you know, if you do need those, all those things, those are more so vices, like how babies need bottle, their bottles. Or maybe you could be very proud of, you know, your physical possessions, whatever. You know, some people collect sports cars. I don't know. I have no desire to. And it's a very costly thing to be doing. If you want to be doing that, that's great. You know, that's, that's just not my thing. And, you know, if I was a high, super high income, you know, earner, would my life be any different? Probably, you know, I'd probably still carry the same values, live modestly, live below your means, and just, you know, just practice happiness and gratitude. You don't really need to keep buying things. Uh, this is a consumer economy, I get it attention economy but I don't know I don't know what's like to be some like guru guy and making you know millions of dollars but you know or whatever I'm just gonna keep it real here so should you be doing 16 hours days for work um Yeah, you could try it out. I, I don't have anything against it. Or what else would you be doing? Go to school, working. Go to school, working, chasing round girls, procreating. You know, it's, that's what it's been like since forever. And that's what guys do because of Chad and Tyrone. Or an Adonis. He ste stepped foot into the spotlight as well but anyways who do you want to be maybe you could be a bounce and a mixture of both you know
in any event there have been reports that there are people who doctors even making these six figure seven figure salaries they eat organically and everything and then they hit a point where they get cancer and just fucking die because they didn't sleep they were too stressed of course you'd be too stressed because you have too many phone calls to answer too many people to help and your time is just you know de delegated towards you know other taking care of other people not yourself again with the stress and with the sleep thing you have to be sleeping you know some people I talk to you know their, their brain doesn't shut off you know super high earning people their brain doesn't shut off you know they don't sleep and that just leads to lower immunities higher risk of cancer diabetes whatever the fuck and you die um, you know your lifespan is just shortened because of that and it's just like what was the point to be a high income earner you had to sacrifice your health basically that's why uh, you see the same homeless guy every every week with panhandling outside and he never seems to to die you know no matter how much he begs same living conditions same panhandling live modestly moderation is key so instead of going all in and going crazy with 16 hours just moderation is key 8 hours 12 hours you know just to have a sustainable way of life and doing business making money and you know long term sustainability 16 hours is just overdoing it unless if there was a good reason be, if you're getting paid a lot of money super amounts of money yeah, I would be doing it but as for a normal human being no it's just you would get taxed anyways and you would just make ten or twenty thousand dollars more, which is fucking nothing. You'd rather just sleep. Use that money to to spend time sleeping and recharging your body and doing whatever and enjoying your life with whatever time you do have. In conclusion, working sixteen-hour days is stupid. You shouldn't be doing it unless you're trying to learn something. Um, I don't do this all the time. The company just had this opportunity for me to sneak in and do do it because people were on vacation or they're sick. Speaking of which, my coworker, who's been working 40 years, two jobs, including overnights on, on the weekends, is now in the hospital. He's, I think he went in the, he got admitted two times within two weeks kidney stones gastrointestinal inflammation and they have to remove some kind of goiter or something from the belly area so he looked otherwise jovial the last time I saw him but then he just you know go, people go down pretty quick once they get hit you know and he's only has he's retiring at the end of the year and he never quite fully made it uh, he couldn't even do that because uh, you know time caught up with him two jobs 40 years um, it's clear as day to me that he was never into fitness but he did work a lot so other than that that doesn't really count as physical activity and he would sleep on the chair um, at work quality of sleep is the window as well so you know at the age of 63 x 64 you can't be doing that shit you know you have to be getting your eight hours of sleep on your bed in a dark room quiet which he definitely could afford to be doing welcome to capitalism I don't know. he has a roommate and everything to a bedroom condo you know you should have prioritized his health, but again, like I told you, the doctors, 
eating everything organic, ignoring sleep, ignoring stress, you know, got cancer and got sick and died. Should you overwork yourself for money? Should you overwork yourself to the ground for money? No, no, unless you're dirt poor and you really needed the money, you're, you know, you're homeless, you know. You know, you have to make smart decisions or you're just gonna fucking, you know, get sick and die. That's an option too, or it's just, you know. That's one way to, you know, reinvent yourself, just being dead. You know, that's how you get out of the, the matrix, by dying. By ascending, meaning that you die, okay? That's how the cults refer to, ascension. When you drink the Kool-Aid, you die. There's your, you go into the next magical kingdom. It's a scam. It's a trap. It's a trap. That's what they say. It's a trap. Hopefully, you know, you'll find wealth, love, peace, and happiness, and sense of balance in your life and money is bullshit you know the real currency is your health being able to sleep seven eight hours and just doing whatever you want um, you're not gonna be able to do whatever you want I mean to make money is, is, is fairly difficult so at least get your seven or eight hours of sleep a day or however much you need and just say peace out to the world. So thank you for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. See you in the next one. Peace out.